to Chicago. Can I get a bing bong? <laughs> <laughs> bing bong. Joe Keem, Noah Knight in the United Center. Late in the second quarter, Alex Caruso. Look at this. Yeah. Find Zach Levine who slams it down. Ooh. Caruso to Levine. That's a nice oh. play there. That was pretty. And look, they both get the little, the little vision goggles to celebrate. So the Bulls would head oh. into half, down four. Third quarter, Nick still leading. Kemba Walker here. Uses the screen and fires and hits. Nick's up seven now. With the Knicks up eight, Julius Randle throws it ahead to R.J. Barrett. A little crafty move, spinning Ooh. inside. Tough finish plus the foul. 20 points for Barrett on the night. So under a minute left in the game. Bulls down six. Nikola Vucevic. You bet he hits Ooh. that. The Bulls down just three now, and they like it. Ten seconds to go. Levine, he's going all the way to the rack for a dunk. Uh, now the Bulls are just down by one. Uh, so watch this. Nick's inbound. Play out! Oh! DeMar DeRozan, he saves it. No, it's ruled out of bounds. DeRozan's toe. Look at it here. Just barely oh. on the line. Kevin Durant knows how he feels, man. The Bulls, they almost <laughs> got a turnover. So five seconds left. Julius Randle, oh, missed the first free throw. Missed the second free throw. And look at his face. He can't believe it that he missed both. So final seconds for Chicago. DeRozan coming up here. Tries it. Oh, air ball. Knicks hang on to win 104-103. So, Perk, oh. we got we to go back to your Twitter. You had some some thoughts, some late-night thoughts Yo, run about back. this game. Run it back. That damn Tibbs got the Knicks looking like the best basketball team in New York. Ooh. Something about the culture right now hit different. Carry the hell on. And it's the hell on. It's not yeah. just carry on. He mm. was like, I'm I'm firm on yeah. this one. So, yeah. best team in New York? I will agree for you in the moment, right? Right now, if the Knicks and Nets are playing, I'm going with the Knicks. But let's be real here. I think that the Nets are playing with house money. These guys that they have, you know, Kevin Durant, James Harden, even LaMarcus Aldridge showed flashes. When push comes to shove, they're going to be capable of turning things on. Mm. And so I don't want to say, oh, they are. Like, in the moment they are, we have to see how the season ebbs and flows. But I do think that we do need to put some respect on the Chicago Bulls. Big facts. Defensively and offensively. Like, diversifying their personnel on the perimeter. Knowing that Zach Levine is that guy. But then also, they have a very switchable team perk. Like, everyone can guard everyone and they're playing intense. That's why I love the little goggle signals. Like, that's a team that loves each other. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we get to do that to each other? A little bit. Just a little bit. No, I'm going to keep rolling. Okay. Oh. I'm going to keep rolling. You're going to roll the hell on. Tonight. Look, <laughs> we already know what Kevin Durant and James Harden are capable of doing. K- KD is the best scorer on the damn planet. I get that. But when we're talking about team, we're talking about we talking culture. Teams? We're talking about identity. The Knicks have identity. We saw the score last night. It was 104 to 103. Julius Randle struggled again in Chicago, and the Knicks won the game because they hang their hats on the defensive end. When you have a guy like Evan Fournier fighting to get up over screens, yeah. cracking back, getting in the trenches, taking charges, you got uh, Taj Gibson, who is about the same age as me, still playing, out there sliding his puppies, right? You have guys, Tibbs have guys so committed on the defensive end that were never known for defense. So when I'm looking at a team, I'm looking at culture. Mm. And right now, what do the Nets lack? culture. I agree. I think that right now, yes, you look at the Knicks, they are the better team, the more complete team, the team that has the real buy-in. I just think this version of the Nets is not the team that we will see finish the season. Absolutely, and it's only a handful of games in. Our friend Stan Van Gundy tweeted this morning, right? Everyone who's saying everyone who's the greatest right now and everyone's the worst right now, it's all probably going to uh, shake uh, itself uh, out. Maybe a little more. About the okay, my okay, faith okay, the so, so let's, let's play on your, your faith in gospel then. Janae said right now, she would be taking the Knicks, but wants to see how the season plays out. So any seven-game series, Perk, who are you taking? Battle of New York. If I'm going right now, I'm going with the New York Knicks. And there's no disrespect to Kevin Durant, but without Kyrie Irving, without the, the, the Nets lack toughness, right? They don't have that toughness in the interior. The Knicks have that. And then they have a guy by the name of Derrick Rose, that could go, could come in off the bench and show you flashes of his old MVP self. And then you add a Kimball Walker in there with already with Julius Randle giving you, the Knicks have the more complete team. Zach, are you, Zach Lowe, are you hearing all of this? Are you, are you hearing what these folks are saying? Yeah, what what do you it. think? 
Of course I'm hearing it. The Knicks are awesome. They're four and one. They're killing people. But look, this is very simple. This is very simple. If James Harden is James Harden, this is a non-discussion with or without Kyrie Irving. The Nets are winning that series. Bing bong. It's over. (laughs) If James Harden is the player he's been for the first five games of the season, which is a turnover machine, no free throws, flailing around, just puking up garbage, trying to get calls, missing shots, not getting to the rim, walking around on defense like a Halloween zombie, then it's going to be the Knicks in seven games. It all comes down to Harden. The Nets were a big three. Right now, they're a big one. The Knicks can beat a big one. They can't beat Brooklyn's big two. You you see, this is why I have a problem with, right? Because when it comes down to talking about the Lakers and their struggles, early struggles, we're we're quick to write them off. But when it comes down to the Brooklyn Nets, all of a sudden they're going to figure it out when the Lakers have more championship experience, right? And I'm not trying to move the goalposts. I'm just talking about both favorites that's, that's supposed to come out of the conference. We have a different type of energy when it comes to the Lakers than when it comes to the Nets. When it comes to the Nets, it's, oh. What did I yeah, say just, about the Lakers? No, no, I'm I saying, no, 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 relax, Zach. I'm just <laughs> telling you. I'm talking to the world, not you specifically. You all right with me today. Listen, today. what I'm saying is, is that the Nets are showing us who they are. And you have, in order to win the championship, you have to have defensive-minded people on your team. I'm not taking anything from Kevin Durant or James Harden, but their interior is weak in the inside. I can't wait to have this same conversation back in April. Uh-oh. This is going to be so much fun. The Knicks are back in action tomorrow against New Orleans, against the Pelicans, while the Bulls host the Jazz, and Chicago will be without Patrick Williams, who is expected... They showed that last night yet again by hitting the combined and the hit 10 threes. This is a team to be reckoned with. There's a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference that have improved. The New York Knicks are one of them, and I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. I'm very excited Excited. And the only thing I have to say other than that is we here. And I think we here. We here. I yeah. think we might be. I think we might be hearing yeah. that from you a little bit more. We here. That's I like right. that. So That's on the right. other here. side of the ball, Stephen A. They they weren't yeah. here. The Sixers were struggling. Losses to the yeah. two good teams they played, the Knicks and the Nets. So what are you seeing from the Sixers team? Well, I'm very alarmed from the standpoint, number one, I'm not really alarmed by Joel Embiid because Mitchell Robinson and those boys was in there. He went without a field goal in the first half. His heart didn't seem in the playing too much last night, and we got to monitor that, of course, but I think the absence of Ben Simmons is, is proven to be profound. This is an all-star caliber player, an all-world defensive player, incredibly athletic, ability to create shots for other people, and he's not in your lineup right now. That calls upon Tobias Harris and Maxie and others to really, really step up, and Seth Curry as well, and be an offensive force, and that might not be in their repertoire on a night in night out basis what you look at when you see the philadelphia 76ers i'm sick and tired of seeing doc rivers explain something about ben simmons i said it last week and then daryl morey came out and did an interview with my man mike missinelli in philadelphia but then after that he disappeared again daryl morey is the one that needs to be answering questions about ben simmons we're hearing that you know what we're in a good place and we're making progress well what the hell does that mean because at the end of the day when you look at the rest of the eastern conference you're looking at brooklyn you're looking at milwaukee you're looking at miami you're looking at chicago you're looking at all of these teams okay and of course the new york knicks as well Teams are improving. What's going to happen to Philly if they just stand pat and Daryl Morey doesn't pull the trigger on something to get Joel Embiid, Doc Rivers, and the rest of the crew additional help? That's where the focus needs to be in Philadelphia right now. Mm. Daryl Morey's a big-time executive. We know this. Show us, remind us of that by doing something in Philly with Ben Simmons instead of standing still. Something needs to be done, and I think that much is obvious. So you're saying don't get left behind. Don't, don't sleep and get left behind. Don't get, get left behind. Well, no. Well, do you want one more? We here, Stephen A. We here. <laughs> we here. I mean, that's still Philadelphia got that issue. I'm in New York City. We here. There you we go. We here. Thank and you, I'm loving Stephen it. A. Really appreciate you Alrighty. stopping by. All right. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Don't miss NBA countdown seven o'clock Eastern right here on ESPN. But Stephen A. mentioned that Joel Embiid, the big man, he finished.